I'm going to call a meeting to order at uh, 5.01 p.m. Uh, we have the select board here. We have Dorinda. We have Sarah. We have Claire Rock. We have Sandy Levine. We have uh, Shelly. We have Paul's iPhone and Orca Media. I think that's everyone. So welcome. Uh, do we have any amendments to our agenda? No. Peter, I've got one. Okay. Um, I just want to give a brief update on my ongoing discussions with VLCT about uh, board training. I'm sorry, with what training? Board training. Okay. Okay, I have to... And and I just wanted to mention um, about for potentially reapplying with the grant that we didn't get for the town hall study um, and apply for the um, planning grant, the municipal yep. planning grant. Yep. Okay. So uh, with that, the first item on our agenda is the Planning Commission presentation on the proposed updated land use regulations. CVRPC Senior Planner Claire Rock is to present a likely action on select board official receipt of proposed regulations. So Claire, you are on, good evening. Good evening. Uh, let me see, I do have a presentation to share with you. Let me see if I have the ability to share my screen here. Okay, great. So hopefully you can all see my screen. Seeing some nodding, good. <laughs> yes. um, great, so I'm just going to give an overview of kind of the, the process and the changes that are included in the proposed amendments that the Planning Commission has prepared and is um, kind of formally kind of submitting over to the um, select board for the next step in, in the process. <clears throat> um, so as an introduction, just to give some kind of background and context, um, 2019, the town plan was adopted. Um, and over the past two years from um, 2020 to 2022, uh, the Planning Commission has basically taken on the task of implementing that plan. And part of that implementation process is revising and updating the land use regulations otherwise known as the zoning and subdivision regulations. And that the town contracted um, with me, with the Regional Planning Commission to help them with that effort. Um, that all kind of culminated on June 15th where the public, the Planning Commission held their public hearing on the final draft. Um, and following that public hearing, um, the Planning Commission did um, incorporate some changes um, that they heard from comments and then on the 20th basically kind of finalized that that document um, recording in progress thank you mm -hmm. um, so uh, June uh, July 20th um, finalized that document um, finalized that proposed amendments of the, the land use development regulations and um, here we are today on August 2nd, um, presenting them to you. And um, just as, as a kind of reminder, as far as the next step in the process under statute, um, it does um, uh, state that basically no less than 15 days, nor, nor no more than 120 days after these amendments are submitted to you, the legislative body that, um, the legislative body should hold one or more public hearings on, on this proposal that's being um, presented to you this evening. So the, the goals of the amendments to the land use regulations um, kind of are, can be kind of encapsulated in these kind of four uh, kind of overarching goals. The goals were to clarify the regulations, to modernize them, to simplify them and to align them with the recently adopted municipal plan. And we can talk about kind of what some of that looks like. Basically in the clarification aspect, uh, the planning commission had identified um, areas that could be better worded or simplified um, with the zoning administrator's input for better ease of kind of understanding and administration. 
on the modern ice um, and there were some areas in which um, the regulations would, uh, would benefit from being updated to meet um, current statutory requirements. Um, and basically the regulations were amended in 2003 and there'd been a couple of kind of small amendments done. And so it was to kind of bring them up to, um, you know, kind of more current kind of conditions. Um, wanted to simplify the regulation, kind of similar to clarification, but just be able to make them easier for the public to understand. Um, and as I mentioned, align them with the uh, municipal plan as that's kind of one of the underlying kind of um, uh, requirements of the zoning is that it, it aligns with that town plan. So the, the process in Held, um, dividing up the work into sections, basically tackled the village mixed use and industrial districts in one chunk, uh, looked at the flood prone areas, uh, primarily that area that's east of the village. We kind of spent some time looking at that chunk, um, looking at the natural resources in rural areas, and then also looking at some of the administrative and process sections. And um, you know, as mentioned, the planning commission as a volunteer board um, uh, kind of took these in, in, in those chunks and, and discussed them and went through them. Um, and, and this is kind of the culmination of that, that process. Did get public input along the way. There were two surveys, two surveys that were distributed. Um, and both surveys had um, kind of on average about 100 people responding to them. And in general, people were very positive with the, the changes that were kind of being presented and being, being considered. There was some direct outreach done to property owners, and that was specifically for the, the people that um, were are in the floodplain about some of those changes. And there was some direct outreach also done to um, property owners that live in the Putnamville area. Um, so those property owners were contacted directly and um, uh, asked to provide any input on some of the changes that were being considered. You know, the public, the planning commission held public um, meetings all throughout the process, and they also had uh, the public hearing that I referenced, um, where there were members of the public that attended and provided comment. So I'm going to go through the the changes. I'm definitely not going to hit on every single item. Um, basically, what we've been able what we provided to the select board is um, a track change document uh, where you can see all the changes that were made and then there's a clean document. So if you just wanna kind of look at it afresh, um, you have the abil ability to do that. But I'm gonna go through some of the kind of like bigger sections or bigger items that were um, discussed and changed. Um, the first one I think is kind of along the lines of, you know, how do we simplify the regulations? And this was done through kind of, I guess, two different ways. One of the ways we can simplify the regulation is to streamline the permit process. And that's basically to try and ease the approval process for certain types of small scale development that's compatible with other uses in the area and in the town plan. And so the proposed change kind of on that front is basically to merge the functions of the planning commission and the zoning board of adjustment and um, basically just create um, one board, the development review board that will take on all those responsibilities. So you don't have that bifurcated review process, which in some cases required applicants to go to two different boards and have two different hearings. One way that can be simplified is just to have all of that development review fall under the responsibility of one board, the development review board, and then that frees up the planning commission to kind of take on more of that long range planning um, uh, that they are so good at. Um, and the primary section where you see these changes is within section 7.8. The other part of simplifying the regulation is to streamline the permit process. And this is trying to kind of with that same goal to ease the approval process. So another change that um, was incorporated into this draft was basically to introduce the site plan review process. Currently, right now, the regulations specify kind of the administrative review process that you see kind of in, in that um, table with the three columns. So basically, currently you have that administrative review process that's permitted by the zoning administrator, and then you have the conditional use review that's permitted currently, I would say, by the um, 
the Zoning Board of Adjustment and by the Planning Commission, but under this we're, we're proposing, you know, that will be done by the DRB. Basically, that conditional use review is where you kind of review site plan features and you take into account kind of kind of external impacts. What we're proposing here is to incorporate a site plan review process, which is that middle column, where basically it's a more simplified review that's done by the Development Review Board, but can help ease the process for some types of development. While it seems like it's an extra step, it can really help um, uh, ease the process by not holding all applications to kind of a more rigorous review standard where that might not necessarily be necessary. Um, and so um, that section that's been revised and where you can find information about that particular change is within section 7.8. Um, now we're going to kind of move into kind of looking at kind of what the town plan says and being able to see kind of, you know, what does that vision document say and how did the planning commission kind of respond to those directives in the zoning amendment changes, which was another kind of big thing to be able to look to and help guide the process. So in the Middlesex town plan, it says, um, that the town will encourage small scale commercial development in the village district and maintain the historic village as a commercial, cultural, and civic center of the community. So based upon that, the proposed changes that you see in the regulation is basically there's an increased um, allowance on allowable uses in particularly in the village area. So you're seeing now an, an allowance for some accessory buildings, galleries, studios, museums. And basically we're kind of incorporating that streamlined permit process for more uses. So people who want to develop those types of uses that are compatible with that village area don't necessarily have to be held to that kind of most rigorous conditional use review. They can go through that site plan review or get approval by the zoning administrator. So you'll see those changes um, primarily, you'll see them in the district um, uh, uh, table for the village, but we incorporated a new table 2.9, which is a summary table that includes all the uses, all the districts. So it really provides that quick look of, you know, what can you do in what district? And you'll see the different types of uses and the different types of review processes, which, um, uh, are applied to those particular uses. There's also a new section 4.14 that uh, I just wanted to mention, and that's kind of a how gas stations would be treated. Big discussion about how currently gas stations are not allowed anywhere in Middlesex. They had been allowed in the village, and because there had been that kind of historical kind of permissible use, and um, the planning commission did include that yes gas stations would be allowed in the village primarily because you want to if you if you want visitors to or if visitors are going to be stopping to get gas you want to bring them to your village and not keep them out by the highway um, and that uh, basically we incorporated performance standards around that particular use um, very much similar to how um, Moortown has in their regulation. So it kind of gives very specific criteria for that particular use. So that is, um, that is a change that you'll see in the regulation. Um, another thing the town plan says is to allow for growth in areas west of the village and north of the interstate that complements but doesn't detract from the village and avoids strip development. So what what the changes that are being proposed that are kind of along these lines is that we're basically streamlining the permit process for our light industry, professional offices, garden centers, and recreation facilities, and basically including an allowance for accessory retail in the mixed use district. Once again, you can really get kind of a snapshot of these changes um, looking at that new table 2.9 that's been incorporated into the regulation. Uh, kind of similarly, but slightly different, the town plan says to target the mixed use and village zoning district for new housing, including a diversity of housing types. So how the regulation was changed to help accomplish that goal is that um, the, there are reduced lot sizes and setbacks in the village district. And basically there's um, an allowance to be able to streamline the approval process for small scale multifamily dwellings. And we're defining those as those types of multifamily dwellings that contain three to six units. Um, 
any multifamily that would be seven or more units would still be required to go through that uh, higher, more rigorous review. Uh, but it's a way you can help kind of facilitate and ease some of the regulatory hurdles to creating some of the housing that's been identified as desirable by the town. You'll see once again, that snapshot can be found in that new table and also within the definition section of kind of what these types of um, uses are. Town plan goes on to say that um, the, the, uh, to make the permitting process for home-based businesses, um, I think there must be a typo. I don't really believe it says to make it clean, easy, and affordable. <laughs> Um, it must be clear to make it clear, easy and affordable. Also to ensure that childcare centers are permissible where appropriate, make the processing, uh, permanent process clear, easy and affordable. So along those lines, basically clarified within the regulation uh, that those um, types of uses are either just allowed by uh, an administrative permit or by that site plan review by the zoning administrator. Once again, I kind of identified the sections of the regulations at the bottom of the slide where you'd find kind of those particular changes um, uh, in the new document. Um, town plan also says to support agricultural enterprises while preserving natural and agricultural resources, fragile features and the scenic rural character. So the changes that are being proposed is basically we want to clarify the state exemptions for agricultural and forestry operations. That's one of those aspects where we're trying to just to ensure there's alignment between kind of some of the statutory requirements um, and also to be able to allow farms the ability to diversify their operations and increase their um, once again, I apologize for the typo ability to market agricultural products. Um, by basically defining a new permit process for accessory on farm businesses. And this is also um, something that's being promoted by the Agency of Agriculture, um, where kind of just want to acknowledge and allow farms to be able to do those accessory businesses and being very clear in the regulation about what they are and what the permit process is for them. Town plan says to examine the town's zoning map and update as needed, and the zoning map should respect the areas identified for conservation. Um, and goes on to say that we should be preparing for future flood hazards and to keep new buildings, utilities, and other infrastructure set back from streams and rivers so the flood flows are neither restricted nor diverted to the detriment of others. So the way that the new regulations are responding to and working towards those specific directives is that. Um, limiting new, new buildings in the floodplain to reduce the risk of damage. And we're clarifying within the flood regulations that there is a prohibition on new dwellings in the floodplain, along with the existing prohibition of um, uh, new buildings in the floodplain. Also looking to reduce new industrial development near the floodplain by converting a portion of the zoning district designated along Route 2. Um, to not be industrial use. And at the end of this slideshow, I'm gonna show you kind of some of the changes that were done to the zoning maps. You'll be able to kind of visually see how some of those changes have been um, addressed. Um, the town plan says to encourage economic development. They'll provide good paying, highly skilled jobs and desired services. So one of the ways that the zoning can help um, further that goal or decrease any barriers to achieving that goal is that um, to allow for smaller lot sizes in the industrial district. So basically we, we lowered the lot size uh, from um, one acre down to half an acre. You'll see that change under table 2.4 that is specifically includes the dimensional standards you know, for the industrial district. Um, town plan um, goes on to further uh, state its desire to increase affordable housing options in Middlesex and to ensure that accessory dwelling unit uh, provisions meet the, um, uh, the state requirement and once again to target the mixed use and, and medium density residential village districts uh, for those new housing types. I already shared one way that the zoning is helping to address that. Another way it's doing that is um, by increasing the flexibility of property owners to add um, more accessory dwelling units. So basically we're 
allowing, we're increasing the allowable size of accessory dwelling units um, that will give more flexibility to people who want to add those particular units. And that change can be found in section 4.2. Um, uh, we're coming close to the end. Um, so the town plan does say to help maintain Middlesex forest and fields. Uh, it goes on to specify that development should be planned and carried out to ensure the continued use of forests and fields and avoid fragmentation of identified forest blocks and connectivity. It also kind of gives the directives to align the zoning regulations to reflect this goal and that it could be, and it could include a change to developable areas as well as enhanced resource specific standards. So the way that the planning commission addressed uh, furthering these specific goals identified in the town plan is that there was inclusion of specific natural resource protection standards in the subdivision review process, um, specifying that there would be kind of, kind of wanting to limit development near streams and wetlands and to protect those important habitat areas. And you'll find those particular changes are incorporated into Article 6. Talking about some of the changes to the zoning map, on um, the uh, left-hand side of the screen is the existing zoning map. And what we're looking at is that area between the village and um, the, the Montpelier town line that runs um, kind of along route to uh, along the interstate highway and is kind of bounded by the Winooski River. That particular section that we're looking at in that map um, is the section that runs basically from the um, east of the village past the settlement farm over to um, where the route to crosses um, the interstate where that new bridge was built and it incorporates that area where there's some baseball fields behind like a a commercial industrial building. Um, so that's currently designated as industrial. So what's being proposed in this change is that we change the map ever so slightly. And what you're seeing on the right hand side of the screen is it can, I understand it's a little bit confusing because there are some different colors being used on, on this map update. But basically changing the designation of that particular area along that stretch of road, not to be industrial, but to change it to be um, pink, to make it rural residential. Um, and basically what you'll see that area in the lower corner, um, the yellow area is still industrial zone and that's, there's still an industrial zone that goes out towards the Montpelier um, line. Uh, but what you'll also see is we've overlaid the floodplain on the zoning map, which I think can be really helpful. And so what you'll see is that most of that area is indeed the floodplain. So there is very limited um, industrial um, opportunity in that area. And that area currently kind of has more of a rural character with the farm fields. So there was that slight change made to the zoning map in that particular um, uh, area. The other change that was made to the zoning map is around um, the, the Wrightsville Reservoir zoning, uh, Wrightsville Reservoir area and the Putnamville area. So once again, we're looking at the current zoning map that is on the left-hand side of the screen. And we believe this is probably an error that the whole kind of per perimeter of Wrightsville had been designated as a rural residential district. And to the north, it's very hard to see, but there's a blue blob area that kind of designates uh, Putnamville as a village district. So here we're kind of trying to make more of a kind of a technical change. We believe this was an error in the data and that the, the floodplain area surrounding the, the reservoir should not be the rural district, but should indeed just be floodplain designation. And we're also just kind of clarifying the extent um, of the Putnam Phil district and kind of making that its own kind of zoning village-like district. So here we're kind of just making sure that it's very clear to people about what the intent is uh, for those particular areas. So that basically sums up kind of the presentation that I have for you on the zoning changes. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, you may have on the document. I believe you've received the draft document. Um, so uh, I don't know if anybody has any changes uh, and um, that kind of sums up the work that we've been working with the Planning Commission. Thank you, Claire. Uh, 
I know this is a lot to digest. I I uh, I poured through the regulations today, and uh, your your summary tonight was very helpful in pointing out the the uh, the significant changes. But um, with that, does anyone have any questions? The process will be that we will uh, we will accept this document uh, tonight, and then we will schedule a public hearing, and we will all have an opportunity to think about this and review it and see if there's anything we want to change. But this is a good chance to, uh, to ask Claire questions if you have any. Yes, Liz. Hi, hi Claire, thanks. That was, that was very helpful. On the last slide that you showed us um, with the change around Wrightsville, I'm just curious. So there never was a designated floodplain in the past, and now it's... There was, um, it just wasn't depicted or illustrated on the zoning map. It was referenced within the zoning document and it does show on your interactive zoning map, but was not on the um, kind of original stationary map that's also kind of included with your zoning regulations. Okay. I think there's, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's just one house um, between like right across from Wrightsville, that's a um, residential home that will now be, I mean, maybe that it's on that map, maybe there's a little road, but I'm just curious, does that affect them in terms of like, suddenly they have a house in a floodplain or, you know, in terms of their insurance and things like that. It's the, um, so, thinking of the Christmas tree farm. So the, um... They, they probably, the, the flood plain designation for that area has always been the same. We're just choosing to depict it and clarify it on the zoning map. So um, we're not changing the flood designation um, of any properties. Um, I do know just as an aside that FEMA is, um, planning on updating their floodplain maps in our region. And that'll probably be a multi-year process, which I think they're just starting. So um, it could be good just to kind of like, maybe kind of see, you know, how those changes evolve, because then that would have the effect of impacting people in Middlesex. Um, but that designation hasn't changed. We're just kind of just showing it for clarity. Okay, I guess I just, you know, one, I, and Maybe Sandy knows um, with the Meadow Ridge Farm. It, it's very close to the road. That's why I'm curious because it now looks like it's concert. I mean, obviously it's their property, but does that affect them in some way? That it's now, I can't remember what the, was it rural residential and now it's conservation? Oh, right. Because of the designation has changed. So that yeah. would change um, like the, uh, I mean, basically, if you have if you have a house there, it's basically kind of grandfathered in. It would affect you if, um, say, you were wanting to either subdivide or build a new building, and now the uh, the setbacks may have um, changed. Um, so there there could be uh, a slight kind of impact in that way, but it's not going to affect kind of something that they already have because that's kind of already kind of grandfathered in. Yeah, because they have a business and their house is there and it looks on this map like it would be now a part of this conservation thing, so, okay. Yeah, this is Sandy. I will just add that when we, when we looked at the map for the area around Wrightsville, nearly all of that area, the, the whole, um, perimeter is owned by, I think it's Washington Electric, yet there was complete congruence between an area that was identified as rural residential, a little, you know, all around the ring of Wrightsville, um, that was also entirely the floodplain. So I, we thought it had maybe been mislabeled, like why would you just have the perimeter of Wrightsville and all of the floodplain be rural residential when everything else around it was conservation. So 
we thought it was a mistake. Nobody seemed to know why it was that way. And it seemed to be more consistent to have that be conservation and particularly where there is limitations to development in a floodplain anyway. I ask a question? Yes, Sarah. Um, just want to clarify, Claire, what you talked about, um, that properties that are grandfathered in, but if they want to subdivide, there might be changes in setback areas. Are you just talking about the um, industrial district or and the and the and, and this floodplain area around Putnamville? I just want to be clear on that because that's actually going to be something that will be important. Sure. So we um, the dimensional standards in the village and in the industrial district um were changed which would actually allow more flexibility to property owners so there won't be we're not kind of making them more restrictive so that should not be a, a problem for for people who want to develop their okay. land um in that um floodplain area that happened to be designated as rural residential uh it's now being clarified that they're actually in the in the conservation district if they're kind of in that area. So um, their dimensional standards um, would change. Thank you. Anything else, anyone? I just had another question. Okay, Liz. You talked about, you know, the, the area across from um, the mixed use area that currently isn't developed yet, but near the village. And you talked about, um, some of the changes about what could be there. You mentioned accessory retail. What what does that mean? What's like what's an example of an accessory retail? Sure. So yeah, this is a change that was made to the mixed use district, which is the area that sits to the north of the interstate. Um, and that um, through the through uh, members of the public came and kind of had the discussion about kind of, you know, increasing the flexibility and what that might be like. And the planning commission um, was in agreement that they didn't necessarily want just, just general retail in that mixed use area because they really wanted to focus all the retail more in the village area. Um, however, kind of through the discussion was um, an allowance for accessory retail that we've included a new definition for, where basically that um, you could only have retail in that district if you're proposing like a mixed use development and where there are other uses and the retail is kind of more just accessory to the other mixed uses that are happening there. And there is a cap on the size, um, which is, um, and Sandy, you have to correct me, it's like 5,000 square feet or um, a certain square footage that kind of puts some kind of parameters and boundaries on it. So it, it kind of keeps it more smaller and has to be proposed along with other types of uses that are there. Thank you. Great. Just to clarify that, so uh, if this is where this is only the mixed use district that you're talking about, right, Claire? Correct. Have, so, in other words, if you came in, let's say you proposed a uh, community development, let's say houses, um, and you wanted to include something uh, convenient, such as a drug stores or a small drug store, a convenience store, you could put that there, but you just couldn't make that kind of like a big CVS. Does that make sense? Is that kind of what we're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yep. And that's only the industry and that's only in the mixed use district. Correct. Okay, thanks. So with that, unless there's anything further, I think what we need is to is a motion to accept the draft document from the planning commission. And then we need after that, we need to talk about how we're going to uh, go forward after this and whether we're going to go for a vote on uh, on uh, election day or whether we're gonna postpone, potentially postpone our vote until uh, until town meeting. It's gonna be very challenging. I'm sure most of you saw the email back and forth between Sarah and Sandy about that. Um, the more I've thought about it, the more I've thought, you know, I wanna do this process right. I don't wanna rush it. I wanna have time for 
the select board to review it, potentially make a few changes, have a public hearing, maybe make some more changes, uh, and work our way through the process, which would be be very challenging, if not impossible, if we're going to go for a for a uh, for a vote on election day. But anyway, let's take it one step at a time. Is somebody willing to make a motion to to accept this document from the planning commission to the select board? Liz? Yeah, I moved it. Yeah. Okay. And is there a second? Thank you, Phil. Um, all in favor of accepting the draft uh, zoning bylaw uh, changes from the Planning Commission, please say aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Okay, we've done it. Uh, thank you, Claire. Thanks. Again. Yes, thank you. Um, so again, I, I, uh, we just opened the floor for a few minutes here. We're, we're a little ahead on our agenda just to talk about this issue of, of how we're going to go forward from here, when we're going to schedule our public hearing, et cetera. And I know you have some ideas on this, Sarah. Uh, well, just to fill everybody in, if you don't know, well, we are, the Secretary of State's office will be mailing every, every active registered voter uh, ballot in November. And that's going to come from their office. And because of that, the deadlines for getting questions on that ballot have been moved uh, up or back. I've never quite understood that. But anyway, every question that needs to get on the ballot, that particular ballot must be done by August 17th. So just practically, that, that you could draw a line through that because it does not meet, you cannot get it on that August, on that November ballot. So I guess the question for the board is, if you want to go forward with a November vote, what you would have to do is you would have to look at sending out separate ballots just with this question to every voter in November. And what would the cost of that be, Sarah? I don't know what the cost of that would be. It would be, uh, it, you know, I think sometimes you theoretically could say people could either request that ballot or else when they come in to vote, uh, for those who wanna come into the town hall and vote in November, there would be ballots there. But if you first you have to make a decision whether or not every single voter would be, uh, would be sent ballots. And well, I would say, I would say, I apologize for interrupting you, but I would say that if we were to consider doing that, mm -hmm. um, I think we would wanna send ballots to everyone. I mean, making it a, process where you have to request a ballot or you have to show up in person and you can't have, you know, the whole thing. Is well, bad it, for me. So yeah, that would be a couple of thousand dollars, right? Well, it would be, you know, the cost of uh, postage for that ballot would probably be about 60 cents and uh, we have 1400 on the checklist. So we would probably just run off the question on our copier for with a ream with a couple of reams of paper, but it would be time consuming and it would, I don't know how effective that would be, but the, al the alternative is uh, town meeting 2023. And as Sandy can say, this bat the, the question about zoning regulations must be on a ballot. It's not something that can be voted on the floor. So you could add it to the town officer's town meeting ballot, provided that we're not going to hold town meeting by ballot any on, in 2023. Yeah. Those are your options. Yes, Phil. Well, I... I just following up on your opening remarks on this item, uh, Peter, that I, I don't think there's time enough for us to go through the process that's required to give this, uh, you know, a good vetting. And so I, I would be much more in favor of seeing it on the town meeting uh, agenda rather than trying to have us rush um, and, and get this done by election day. And Sandy, there are no other other than the fact that the changes won't take effect until until they're voted on. Uh, there's no pressing need that we need to do it sooner. Not not that I'm aware of. No, I think no. it's you know, March is not that far away. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's almost time to sharpen our skis. Yeah, heaven forbid. Well, not heaven forbid, but it's a little scary. Okay. Um, well, I don't think 
I don't think we necessarily need to finalize that decision now, but we probably should set the date for the public hearing, Sarah. Uh, okay. Well, you know, if you're, if you're not, again, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't have a huge time constraint, you've got, you have, can't be any, can't be any fewer than 15 days. So I guess we're starting with August 18th. Um, if you want to hold a, do you want to talk about the, do you want to, I guess the question for the select board is, would you like to go over the zoning regulations yourself? And if so, uh, whatever is worn for a public hearing, and Sandy, I think it can help me here, must be worn, that version must be worn a certain time before the public hearing. Do you understand what I mean? So if you're going to yeah. just take this as is, that, that simplifies it. But if you're going to meet and say, no, we don't like this or that, this is the version we're putting before the public, then that extends the deadlines. Well, I'm just, what I'm more concerned about is, trying to do something in August when people are still on vacation and away and all that, we're gonna limit the participation where if we can do it in September um, after school's back in and most people are, are back from vacation, I think we'll get better. I would, I would say if you're gonna, if you're gonna go for this in the town in, in March of 2023, as long as it's within 120 days I mean, you could do it in October, right. you could do it in November, you could do it. Right. What's a relatively slow time for the select board I, before budget season crunches? That's what that's what I would recommend. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe the the uh, I mean, if we're going to do it in in conjunction with our select board meeting, we could do it the third uh, third Tuesday of September. How's sure. Want to? You also why, why don't you bring in the fire department at the same time? Why don't you have a big public hearing? Fire department zoning regs. I actually hate to do that together. Okay. I don't know how I don't know how other people feel, but I don't want to I don't want to muddy muddy up the waters, and those are two very different uh, very different issues. I mean, it's it's going to be a lot for people to wade their way through. The, and your your presentation is very helpful, Claire, and I presume you will give us permission to use that as we go forward with the uh, with the process. But you know, highlighting highlighting the changes going through the document I mean, even even the red line version a lot of the red line changes are are what i would consider editorial changes they're not significant change anyway it's a lot is all i'm saying it's a lot so i don't know as we need i don't know as we need a motion on that can we just agree that we'll set the public hearing for the for the zoning then I, I think the board needs to discuss whether or not they'd like to go over the zoning regulations first, because that makes a difference on when you can schedule the public hearing. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, if the, if the select board makes any changes to the current, for the plan you've accepted tonight, then that changes the timeline for the public hearings. So my recommendation would be that we make changes after the public hearing. Let's not make two, if we're going to make changes, let's not make two set of, sets of changes. Um, but again, I don't know how others uh, others feel about that. Fine by me. I mean, it makes the process it makes the process, you know, one step uh, one step simpler and less uh, and less confusing. I think. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with everybody, Vic? Liz? I'm fine with that. I think it's prudent to uh, make any changes after, like you said. Right. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Sandy. You don't have to hold another public hearing after the board makes changes, do they? I don't. I don't know the answer to that question. I, only look, I don't know if there's if for some re, for some if you make like significant changes, you have to have another public hearing. But I I get confused whether that's the town plan or if that's the zoning. You know, as a matter of process, it's not great to hold a public hearing and make a whole bunch of changes that had nothing to do with the public hearing you just had, yeah. and then put that out to vote. Um, so, but I would think, I mean, my hope would be we're going to have a public hearing. We're part of the public hearing. If we're considering implementing changes, I think we would bring them up at the public hearing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be making changes which weren't discussed at the public hearing. I think that's bad practice. I agree. Correct. But if, if we're doing it, I mean, we'll have a, we'll have a six weeks before the hearing to to sit around and uh, hash this around. And we can we can talk about it. If there are issues we need to talk about, we can talk about them at select board meetings in the meantime. Just, don't change, the, just don't change the regulations. Just don't change it until after the public hearing. Right. right. Okay. 
So uh, why don't we, you're, you, have, you have plenty of time. So why don't we just warn that public hearing for the uh, 20th of September. Do you I want to make a motion for that or? Sure. Someone make that motion, please. Um, and a second. Victor seconded. Victor seconded. All in favor of having the public hearing for the uh, amended zoning regulations on September 20th, 2022, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, there you go. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And Claire, you are fine with us using your uh, using your presentation going forward. That's part of the work product of what you were paid to do, I presume. Yes. Yes. Of okay. course. I just don't want to be. I just don't want to be <laughs> violating any uh, any any rules or create a problem when there isn't one. But that will be that will be helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, moving on, uh, the next step in the CB fiber process is this uh, agreement. And Phil, I got it wrong. What what when I emailed you, I thought about that that short little agreement thing that we had we had previously signed. This obviously is a more uh, detailed meeting, meaty, excuse me, document. Right. But really, the, I read through it. I really didn't see, uh, I didn't see anything bad in there. But to the extent we had our attorney look at that first little agreement, I think maybe it makes sense to have him take a quick look at this just before we sign. We could. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how other people, other people feel about that, but there's a lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot of stuff in here, as I say. I think a fair amount of it derives from the work that Rob did for us back at the beginning of this process in conjunction with CV Fiber's uh, attorney. So, you know, he may look at it and go, yeah, I wrote most of this. So, well, that's, and that's fine. And we spent yeah. $50 or something for exactly for, uh, for a few minutes of his time. But I just, I just want to be careful. These guys, these guys are uh, throwing a lot of, uh, legal stuff at us and i just want to be sure we don't get caught in between the cracks so if everybody agrees with that i would suggest uh sarah if you could send it send it over to him and then if he gives it the uh if he gives it the okay i'll sign it and if he has any questions or concerns we'll wait till our next uh wait till our next board meeting they've certainly been taking their time i don't think we uh yeah we need to feel like we're any, under any time pressure. Yes, sir. Well, I, I think the, the brush was on the first piece, which was the commitment, which allowed them to uh, get in front of the deadline for the match. And I know yeah. that, that they did that and our money is definitely being matched. So um, yeah, you're right. I don't think there's a, a huge time crunch here now. Do, do you... Do we need a motion that says that the board gives uh, Peter the authority to sign if uh, the, sign, the town attorney signs off on it or whatever? I would say we do. I would say we do. Sure. Or, or would you rather, or would you rather have a uh, a report from him at our next board meeting and then have me sign it? There you go. You like okay. that better, Victor? No, I do. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. okay. Anything? Anything? Uh, anything else on this? So, uh, Dorinda, Treasurer's Report, Town Fiscal Issues, Action hey, Possible. Peter, Peter, there's more on that, Jenna. Oh. You guys, at your last meeting, you wanted to discuss uh, when you were going to hold a public hearing to discuss the ARPA funds. You said, let's uh, talk about this at our oh, next. Oh, okay. Meeting. That's in that same. I'm, I'm sorry. That's in that same uh, same yeah. item. I'm, I uh, zipped over that. I apologize. So, when would we like to uh, hold our ARPA public hearing? And I guess I would make the same comment about that that I would make uh, that I made about the other one. I would prefer to have it in, in, uh, in September or maybe even October. But we also need to be thinking about when we're going to have the fire department thing. Yes, Dorinda. Uh, I thought there was talk about you guys reviewing what you had come up with previously and then 
calling it down before going for the public hearing. Yes, I think we should do that. Yes. I agree. So you, I, I, I kind of thought that's what was going to be on that we were going to talk about that type of item. What what we should go forward with on that or what everybody's thoughts are. Well, do we have, I don't, I'm over here at the lake. I don't have any of my paperwork with me. So I do not have, uh, I do not have the uh, list we came up with. Do you have it, uh, I Sarah? Do. Liz I do. has it. And Liz has it. Yeah, let me just, um, can you know. pop it up on the screen? I'm having a hard time hearing you because there. Yeah, Liz, there. We... Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, let me just look under my files. I have a file called Middlesex. Well, I think we had it. In, we had it in the minutes here. Yeah. Because um, I know all the ideas came over the amount of money we had to spend. Yeah. Hold on. I have it. Here we go. ARPA ideas. Uh, should I share this? Uh, do you have the screen sharing available? Yeah, you should be able to if you go down to share your screen or something. Okay. Claire was able to do it. Yeah. yeah. We have it. Okay. Do you guys see it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what we have. Let's see if I scroll down a little bit. Okay, so it says the ARPA was 515. That's what our total is. That's what it will be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the total wish list comes to 759. The total committed is 220. That's in bold. We didn't really truly commit, but that's except for the hundred thousand, and um, we haven't even done the air packs yet. But that's what we kind of thought we had committed, and then that left us with just under three hundred to That fund balance came from in April. That's not, it's not that high, is it? Well, and that's not really the fund balance. That's all the money we yeah. have for everything. That shouldn't yeah. even be on the list, to be honest with you. Um, because what you can take off of this probably is the 50,000 for the retention bonuses because we've already, already expended that. You didn't want to pay yourself back? For that well i mean that comes out of the fund balance so one way or the other you, you're taking it out of pot a and putting it in pot b yeah um could i delete it everybody i'd go yeah, for delete it. delete it um <clears throat> i think that also that it's a good time to talk about are what the intentions are for the town hall. I think we are about to fail an inspection that we just had down there. And I'm sure Sarah can talk more about that, but I think that building is in a, a near crisis situation. And um, I think we really should be talking about what our plans are to move forward. Um, and you know, should more money be going into that? I'll also say it's a good time to be borrowing if we're gonna borrow because I think the interest rates certainly are headed in the other direction. Mm -hmm. In the long run, yes. Yeah. Um, so you know, we we did put we did put thirty thousand in here if we don't get the VCDB grant, which we didn't get um we're we've been encouraged to reapply we're going to talk about that in a little bit but you know what our chances are of getting that i just i just don't know but i don't think they're all that great 
Uh, this, this is a different grant. This is the one that we got for the, this, I was proposing that we apply for the planning grant, which is what we got for um, our capital spending plan. And talking to Central Mountain Regional Planning Commission, they thought that could be a good fit. Um, it wouldn't be 60,000. I think the maximum is maybe 22 or something like that. So it would help. And then we could say that we have other funds earmarked to help support it. Yeah. Like this 30,000. I think we want to, for the time. But we're not going to, I don't think we'll get the BCD. Yeah. But I think what Dorinda is saying is, you know, we're in desperate times. I still think we need to, regardless, like they're not going to, a grant isn't going to pay us back for something we already did, like the planning grant. It has to be something moving forward. Um, so the question is, do we want to wait until spring to do a, you know, because we wouldn't find out until January, maybe December, I forget if we got the grant or do we want to just say, forget about it. Let's just do bare bones um, review of the building, engineering and structural review of the building. Hey, can I, well, I think that's, I think that's what we need to do. I, I don't think, and I'm, I'm, I, I would like to hear what the uh, result of the inspection was, but um you know, we want to be careful we don't get backed into a corner here and all of a sudden have our town hall condemned and then what the hell do we do? Can I can I speak? I, yes. I don't know. So um, the the Vermont, uh, the, I'm trying to remember, Vermont uh, Disability, Vermont Associates for Disabilities, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, they did an audit of our town hall and uh, to see if we were accessible at all. Mostly it was to be accessible for elections. And you, these people are very nice and usually they make recommendations, what you could do, build ramps, uh, allow, you know, install this electronic situation, a device, that electronic situation. We can't, there is nothing they can do, no recommendations they can make for town hall. Here mm -hmm. are the primary problems that we have. Using going back to our friend, the lift. Uh, both doors, of course, are heavy and they are not electronically operated. But even if they were electronically operated to that lift, the well is situated right by the door um, so that it cannot, the door, the door to the lift on the ground floor cannot open all the way. Moreover, there has to be a certain amount of uh, kind of a wall that sticks out so that somebody could depress a, like at the mail at the post office, activate a button and enter the lift. The lift itself is too small. The lift has been um, on its dying legs for as long as I've been here and it has failed inspection. And recently we got um, the access mobility people in to, to come in and they said it really should not be used. They've got it so that it is functional for the for this for this voting on the 9th, but it's scary. And the overarching issue that the Vermont Council on Disability, Vermont's whatever said was that someone is going to get injured. It's just a matter of time. And it's probably gonna be an elderly person whether it's going to be the lift that's getting into the lift, whether or not they're going to get stuck in the lift, whether they're going to fall down the stairs, whether they're not going to, where the door, the, the doors are so heavy, they will close, they close on people. Someone is going to get injured. They're going to fall. Fingers are going to get pinched. We are, uh, we're a, a liability nightmare. So come, when you look at those kind of logistical problems of that building right there, it goes beyond simply saying, okay, we're going to expand the building for, this, you know, to create a handicap accessible uh, building, which is, you know, fairly hard to do with this with this two story structure. We then you add on to it the fact that the boiler is also gone. The heating system is gone. We had to have it repaired because there was water in it um, in February. And the guy said, "Look, at I just don't. I don't even know what we can do with this. The, the, it's so old. There can't be any parts. The vault is cramped. It's gone. It's just we can't have. We have to either expand it or blow it out." We don't have a septic system that's worth anything. It's extremely fragile. We only have a dry well. We don't even have any modern way to, to accept the effluent. 
And, you know, finally, we've got, oh, we've got a, a building here that's completely uninsulated that has broken windows and I'm sitting here and I'm sweltering. I just don't know why we're putting all this money into repairing this building when we don't have the parking, we don't have the septic, and we have major structural problems. And that's my spiel. So with all of that, and I don't disagree with anything you said, you know, uh, let's have some kind of a process to verify that in fact, all those things are correct. And certainly the elevator part is correct. And most of the rest of what Sarah said is correct. And that that just makes it unfeasible to uh, continue to use that building. Then we're in the, then we're in the mode of, of uh, selling the existing town hall on that property or potentially demolishing it, I suppose, or building a new, whatever the, whatever the next step is gonna be, but let's get on with it. And, Let's not spend five years talking about it like we do getting rid of the old fire station. But Can I just make all a point? That said, all that said, the issue tonight is to consider culling down this uh, list before the, before the public hearing. And yes, go ahead, Liz. I was just going to say, per the town plan that Claire had just said, one of the things in the town plan says that the village is is uh, set for civic engagement, which to me means town hall. I can't think of another thing that civic engagement would mean besides government, but maybe there is something else. So that might actually even tell us that we should keep the town hall in the village, regardless of what we decide to do. Um, but secondary- hey, Liz, Liz, yeah. excuse me for interrupting you. I can't hear you. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. Very, yeah, I just, Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll just shout. Um, okay. The I, I was just saying that the town plan that Claire shared with us, just that little piece, said that the village um, in our town plan in 2019 uses the word that it's to be used for civic engagement, which to me means the town hall and government should be in the village which if we're going to follow the town plan and that's what that means and we interpret it that way, then we should think about the fact that we might not move the town hall to someplace totally different like Rumney School or next to the garage. Um, second, secondly, if indeed it is a terrible situation to have voting here, we should not have voting here and we should have it only at Rumney. And that's an inconvenience to everyone. I get that. But maybe after this election, because we can't change it at this moment in time, maybe after this election, we don't have elections here. If it truly is where we are worried that someone's going to die trying to vote who's disabled. Yeah, but let me say something that this building is not just used just for elections. This is a public building. And Liz, I completely understand what you're saying about the village. I would love that. That sounds great. But right now, people, elections are the only reason people come. It's a, it's a public building and people who are disabled should be able to ac access it independently, full stop, for whatever reason. Licensed dogs, pay taxes, look through land records. That doesn't matter. So that's the larger issue. The question is, you know, uh, maybe the town can go by the church lot across the street if they're not going to expand it. Maybe we can, I don't know. This, if you have to stick it in the village, maybe somewhere down by Red Hen, something's got to happen. Well, we've, still got, we've still got the issue of the state police barracks as much as that does seem that to That would be great. Well, I think at a very minimum, I'd have to look back at the grant. At a very minimum, you were probably talking 30000 to do, you know, a full engineering and, and um, the MEP study. I forget what that stands for. Mechanical, electrical, yeah. and plumbing. Um, but structural as well. Um, and so... If we should, maybe we should say, okay, we're going to earmark 30000 of this for that and not apply for a grant because the grant is not going to happen until January at the earliest. And that's going to be too late. Yeah, but let me, ask, gonna... let me ask you this, Liz. If, if the real truth of the matter is that it's going to cost more than 30000 to do this, we can start spending our 30000 And if we get the grant, that 
that covers more of the additional expenses. If we don't get it, we don't get it. But I have to believe, I mean, I, I just find it hard to believe that for, for $30,000 and maybe a little more, I mean, that building is not a complicated building. Um, and, you know, someone can very quickly right. tell us what it's going to cost. Yeah, this was more than that. To have, this a, was to have a true elevator that really works and, you know, this and that. I mean, I just think we need to, we need to figure out who we're going to hire to do this and hire them and put them to work. And at the same time, we can either apply for the grant or not. But if we say to somebody, you know, we've got $30,000 to do this work, can you do it for that? That ought to be the first step. And they say, we can do a, a minimal job for that, but we can't do the right job, then we got to reconsider. But I have to believe they can give us enough information so we can know whether it's feasible to renovate the town hall and really make it work or whether, you know, the best thing to do is to abandon the town hall and build a brand new building somewhere else, whether it's whether it's over at the school and we violate our town plan or we or we uh, find a place in the village. OK, yeah. And the grant was more than just the uh, the MEP and the and the engineering. It was also, you know, options, right? Like researching a brand new building and location and costs, right. um, tearing this one down and rebuilding a new building or renovating. So there were other things besides just doing the study. It right. was offering alternatives to the town. But it right. sounds like if this is truly as dire as it sounds, that we may not have the luxury of presenting to the town options. We may just have to do something and bond well, for it. At the very, the no, no, I apologize for interrupting. I just want to move it along. But I, I mean, at the very least, at the very least, and I see your hand, Phil, at the very least, we'll be able to know, is it even feasible to renovate the existing building or are we in the, or are we in the new building world? Where the new building is going to be is another question. But I, I think we can present those options pretty quick and uh, and move forward. Yes, Phil. Um, I just I I don't disagree with any of the discussion that's been going on, but I just I want to be a stickler for detail. Uh, what was warned was for us to set a date for a public hearing, not to have a discussion of the things that we put on the ARPA wish list or a discussion about what we're gonna do with town hall. So, um, you know, and I think, I think we need to do that. We're probably not ready to set a hearing date and possibly at the next meeting, we should have an item that we have a very frank discussion about town hall and decide how we're gonna proceed and then go on to a discussion about how we wanna use ARPA funds. And then we might be ready to set a public hearing. So I, I just I, I just want to keep us legal and maybe have us move on. Yep. Thank you, Phil. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I mean, uh, you know, and and don't get me wrong, we've we've way overshot on our on our wish list here, but that doesn't mean necessarily that we can't present that at the public hearing and and say we're looking for your input on what your priorities are. Right. Peter, yep. may I just add something? This is Sandy. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I just, just by way of an update, wanted to let folks know I was working with sort of the next iteration of the um, capital planning work for the town. And as part of that, I will be meeting with somebody from Preservation Trust of Vermont that has some grant funds available for restoring public buildings. I'm doing that on Thursday, meeting at town hall, no idea how much funds are available. I don't think it's a lot, but I just wanted to let folks know that as part of this broader process, we are looking at sort of other possibilities of funding. Okay. And it doesn't, doesn't interfere with any of this. I just wanted to let folks know. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> so getting back to setting the date for the public hearing, I think we can set a date for the public hearing. And if we want to call down the list in the meantime, we can look at it. I mean, you know, one of the, one of the things, you know, we, we threw that $300,000 for mud season mitigation in there as kind of a, as kind of a wild card. But I mean, in my, in my idea, 
yes, we need to spend some money on mud season mitigation, but does it need to be $300,000? Probably not. Maybe it can't be. I don't know. But let's set the date for the hearing. So when should it be? When do you want to do it? You can't have two hearings on the same day? <laughs> I think you can. I just don't know if it's a good idea. I think, uh, uh, you know, to do a good job, to do a good job on the zoning regulations, I think you're talking a minimum of an hour. And then to say, okay, now we have this major town issue where we're going to talk about the fire department uh, or the ARPA funds. I just think it's too much. We'll lose people. But maybe I'm wrong. I just wondered. That's all. We're going to lose select board members if we have public hearings every week. Right. <laughs> yeah, and <so>. town clerks. <laughs> yeah. Really. Um, I just would like to request that we not put another hearing on the 20th as I am going to be away. And um, uh, I, I certainly can give input on the zoning stuff, read over those, but I really would like to be a part of any discussion about the town hall and about the use of the ARPA funds. So um, if we could not do that on the 20th, I would appreciate it. Okay, well, maybe, maybe, the, maybe what we should do is defer the decision on setting, uh, on setting this ARPA public hearing, or just say it's gonna be our first meeting in October. I don't know. Well, next, can I speak? Yes. Yeah, there's no statutory requirement for a public hearing to, you know, this isn't, there's, there are no statutory requirement for an ARPA public hearing, unlike the zoning regs. So you can right. decide at your next meeting, we're gonna have a public hearing at our next meeting. It's not like, you know, that kind of public hearing. Right. But, you know, yeah. we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting to talk about ARPA funds and the town hall, and then you guys can decide when you want to hold it. How's that? Works for You're me. Not bound by statute is what I'm trying to say. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At the same, at the same time, we should all be uh, looking over that list and, and thinking about it. But Certainly, certainly the town hall is a major priority. The needs for the fire department are a major priority. Uh, you know, we just got to work our way through it. The other, the other thing I keep hearing, and uh, you know, who knows what it is, but apparently there's supposed to be big tranches of uh, of money coming down to the state of Vermont for uh, for municipal purposes. So that may help us out also. But who knows? Maybe that's just a pipe dream. Two hundred and twelve million uh, from Leahy. Yeah, yeah. Only eight million from uh, another eight from uh, Welch and thirty-eight million from uh, Sanders. And, and, and wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you think that old old Patrick Leahy could find a couple of million dollars for his hometown to help move us into the next century? Who knows? Well, we got to keep our eye on. We got to keep our eye on all this. Mm -hmm. all this stuff um you know and, and again and and you know i know i'm beating and beating a dead horse but you know we're looking at one thing if we're looking at a town hall where we can't have large public meetings you know we can have select board meetings but not large public meetings and we have those at the school it's a totally different ball game if we want to be able to have 200 people in a meeting room on town meeting day if we ever would get 200 people so anyway anyway mm -hmm. let's move on Treasurer's report, Dorinda. Got nothing to report. <laughs> so no uh, no year-end numbers yet? No, well, she's preparing everything. We're still making adjusting entries and we'll be sending everything off. It's going to be right around where the same, what I sent you. We're not too far off of that. So, which okay. is really good for everything that happened. Yes, I would, I would say so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, highway report, Victor. I was just looking to see if Eric was here. He said he was going to be here. Not yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So it says uh, that you want to know about um, North Bear Swamp. What we plan on doing up there is go up and uh, at some point uh, that we can uh, Clear some of that brush and get rid of that. Uh, drain the drain the uh, road uh, in that section where the water is ponding, and possibly put some material 
uh, out of the town pit in there. But uh, as if I can't, we can't tell you we're going to do it. Uh, well, I'll tell you, we're not going to do it for a few weeks because uh, this, uh, this thing with uh, working with one big truck and one little truck is just getting, I mean, that, uh, that international has been out since for three months and it's, 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 it's pretty hard uh, on us, but we will, people are asking us to do a lot of things and we're just, uh, we're backlogged right now. And we're working on uh, center road from Steve Martins to uh, the culvert that crosses right by uh, Cheryl uh, in uh, Jane's house. Uh, Jane Shelp, and uh, maybe we'll be moving on to the next culvert, which is up uh, by uh, Aiden Crowles. When I say the next culvert, we're removing the pavement. So far, the pavement, that was a real bad section, as you know, especially like Phil and Peter, people that travel it every day, Sarah. Um, we're going we're gonna to put material in there. We took about an inch and a half or so pavement, two inches at the max, and uh, we found the old... Uh, uh, legume slate underneath and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna put some gravel in there and, and pave over it we're not reclaiming and we're getting a quote this week uh, as you saw in the corrected minutes I, I was off on the uh, the price per square yard for coal planing but we're going to coal plane the rest of it. probably an inch and a half like it is on route two down there if that if that works for you to understand and then they come in and they level it and uh, the, in other words, they take the dips and dives and kind of square it up, and then they put an inch and a half on top of that, which should save us some money. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that uh, we didn't get on the program before, uh, earlier, but the, the people that are doing the coal planing, which is the grinding um, of, the, of the existing pavement, they have to leave for a little while, and then they'll come back and it's looking like the end of August now, instead of, uh, you know, the first of August, uh, obviously they're not there now. But uh, that's what, that's what uh, the crew is working on right now. So Vic, it's so smooth through there. We should just leave it dirt. It's amazing. It, it hasn't I, been so smooth in years. <laughs> I agree with you 100%, Paul. I just- uh, save, save us a ton and put, put, put it in the dirt roads. I would. I don't know how much pushback we would get if we did. I, I, I spoke with uh, uh, Eric and I have been in conversation as uh, late as today uh, about you know just getting some good some good gravel and uh, from right around eight what, from the place where it used to stop uh, back in the seventies or eighties whenever it was. Uh, but I don't know how much pushback and I don't know how the you know the select board if they wanted to. If comments on that would be greatly appreciated. Can I just ask for clarification? Yeah. Um, so the cold planing is going to happen from Aiden Kroll's old place to uh, to the interstate to the where the state road moves. Correct. Correct. So what are you doing now? That's not called cold planing. What's that called? Removing the pavement with an excavator and a truck. Removing the pavement. So okay, but you're not going to you're not going to cold plane that area. That's just kind of no, like no cold planing is. I'm sorry. I mean, coal planing is just on asphaltic material. The asphaltic material will all be up in the town pit from Aiden Crowell's back to uh, Steve Martin's. Okay. Is that good? I think so. Why don't you just coal plane the whole thing up to Steve Martin's? Because um, it was so broken up and so out of, uh, out of, uh, a lot, you know, so broken up and so rutted okay. that if we touched it with the uh, coal plant, it'd just break up. Okay, thanks. So we also want to drop the level of that, right? What's that? We wanted to drop the level, not just put more product on top of it. Well, yeah, we wanted to get that. <clears throat> one of the reasons we wanted to get that asphalt off so we could rework that area and. Yeah. And, 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 and actually make the road smooth and, uh, and have a grade to it rather than have a big hole in the middle and the edges be higher than the center and the water can't get off the road. Right. So Victor, it's Peter. Um, 
we were talking about the fact that on the not the part of the road where we're removing the pavement, but the rest of the road, we were going to be raising the level of the road like four inches. No more. No more. Done. Gone. Done. No more. That's we'll not clean it out. What's that? Thank you. So what what is the just what's the update on that damn international truck? I mean, should we <laughs> I don't know. Three months of the macro. I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. Didn't hear the last part. Well, just just I mean, is there is the part coming? Is it being manufactured? Is it it's gonna be here August? Uh geez, I don't know, August 8th or something like that. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you do. I don't know. I don't know. The truck is down there and you're kind of committed. Uh, we didn't want to take it to Charlie Boys and we didn't want to take it to, well, we take it to Clark's. Um, I've asked a couple of times and I don't know what Eric found out, but uh, we were looking at, to see if somebody else uh, uh, down in the Burlington area that does that. Uh, um, to see if they could get something, uh, but uh, you know, as far as I know, you just cannot get the parts. Yeah. Well, the, the bottom line is, if it's coming, if it's coming the eighth of August, that's right around the corner. Uh, but if all of a sudden it doesn't come and it's going to be months and months and months more, I think we've got to think about doing something. Whether we, whether we trade that truck as is and try and buy a used truck somewhere, or I don't know, I don't know what we do, but. We're we're losing money. Uh, we're losing money every day when we don't have that truck. It's crazy. It's hard. Yeah, it makes it hard on uh, everybody. Uh, it's not like we're. Uh, it's not like we're running twenty-year-old trucks. You know, that's, that's, that's what drives me crazy. That's the whole reason we buy new trucks, so we don't have problems like this. Anyway, the only, the only silver lining is uh, maybe we'll get it fixed by the time I got to trade it. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Dorinda. Do we know when the new truck's going to be ready? Do we have a ballpark idea? September. September? That's Eric said. Eric's, uh, I'm not don't, I'm not throwing Eric into the bus, and please don't, you don't either, but that's what I understand. Well, he, so, Eric's here. He Eric's here. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm, I'm guessing, I have not talked to them uh, lately, but I'm guessing we would not see it until sometime in September. Um, really? I will reach out to them to see see where they're at with it. Yeah, if if I can get a closer idea, because I need to the quote that I got for the interest rate was only for thirty days, so oh, okay. I need yep. to let them know that it's not going to happen in August. I thought it was going to happen in August. I got you. All right. Yep. I'll, well, I'll do that. If tomorrow. they are if they are forecasting that, I mean, right now. Just recently, interest rates have ticked down a little bit. But if they're forecasting the interest rates are going to be more, let's let's take out the loan and put the money in the bank account and pay it when we have to pay it. Let's not. I'll have to find out if we can do that without actually having the truck, but I'll find out. OK, OK. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so the other, the other question I have, uh, Eric and Vic, is uh, have we made any progress on a, on a new employee? No, <laughs> no, uh, the, the prospective candidate uh, was offered a different job someplace else. So. Okay. So we need to, we need to ramp up the, the advertising and. Correct. Searching and all that. So Sarah, are all our uh, ads still, still current for that position? Yeah, I was just thinking of canceling Indeed because it had expensive and nothing's coming through. But yes, I, I mean, I put them up six weeks ago. I don't know what else more you can do. I I just hate to think of going into winter without another uh, without another guy. I guess what I would do is is remind the existing uh, road crew members if they find somebody, there's a nice payday for them involved. I will do that as well because I know they know a lot of people. So just to keep that out there in, in front of them. Okay, thank you. Anything anything else, uh, board members? Yes, Mike. Well, I'm not a board member, but I just wanted to go yeah. back to the North Bear Swamp discussion for a minute. So I didn't 
I didn't have the opportunity to go on the walk and the discussion that you had following the walk isn't online yet. So I just talked to a few people who were there. Um, seemed like, you know, it was pretty clear, but what, what I was hearing from the various people is that everybody sort of, they said there was agreement about what to do, but nobody was clear what that was. So I'm wondering if Vic or Eric could just give me their take after your discussion last week on whenever whenever it happens, what you are planning to do. So just before we turn it over to them, the, the strong sense was that we don't want to throw up the road and make it a trail. And, and so, that's, my, that's fine. So then, you know, question number two is, okay, if it's going to be a class four road, what improvements can we make to not make it a super highway, but make it passable for uh, for regular vehicles with the understanding that we're going to close it off in the winter. So I think what Victor was describing earlier in the meeting is cutting brush, uh, creating drainage. Eric's idea is to train as you go from the south side to the north side, uh, drain it to the, uh, what would it be, the west, I guess, yeah. side, of the, side of the road, which I hadn't really thought about when I looked at it, but it makes sense to me. So a combination of uh, brush cutting, some new material, and some drainage to make that a passable road and do away with that puddle situation. Okay. Um... That's fine, because uh, at least one person thought it was going to be um, draining, but not necessarily filling. Is that is that just what well, they you can't, I mean, you don't you don't want a good, gigantic dip there. I don't, and, and plus, if you if that means you would have to drain a lot deeper to get to the bottom of the get to the bottom of the puddle. OK, so the fill would be what? I mean, like what kind of material? You're talking about just gravel or? Yes. I mean, yeah. Not stuff with, chances not stuff are with. it might be some combination of, you know, uh, material that we've we've taken off our roads and, and uh, stored at the town shed. Uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be fancy, but it's going to be material, road material. OK, um, I'm just wondering, because I know that one of the concerns is that we have a lot of invasives alongside the roads, and there are no invasives up there currently. And there's a lot of concern about the environmental habitat up there being compromised if we wind up sweeping, you know, sides, sides of the road, storing it, and then throwing it in that ditch. We could just be creating sort of an ecological problem. And I, I, that should be considered just particularly because of the sensitivity of that area. We, we do have some uh, gravel material in our pit that really isn't good enough for roads, but it would be perfect for that situation. Okay, so that would be relatively clean or pretty yes. clean. Correct. Yeah. All right, see that, that's just what I was trying to get to, Peter. Okay, no, that's fine. And 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 again, you know, no no commitment on a date, but we're we're trying to do at least some of that work this fall. Mm -hmm. So, right. Well, as far as the trails committee is concerned, there's there's no rush. And as I said, it's fine that it's staying a road. It's, we weren't like really committed to it being a trail. We just kind of wanted to prompt the discussion. So, yep, yep. Well, the concept, and 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 you know, as you know, we've had. We've had a lot of conversation in the last uh, year or two, and we've thrown up uh, a few sections of, of class four road that we just deemed were impossible to maintain. But uh, you know, we want to pay, we want to ratchet up our attention to to our class four roads and not make them not make them class three roads, but make them passable, drivable roads. Yeah, I mean, in that particular spot, I guess I would encourage. It be you know whatever minimum you felt you needed, but certainly not to encourage people driving through there. If they're going to drive through, they're going to drive through. But we don't necessarily need to take it easy to do that. I mean, the same way that other right, sections. Look, 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 look. <laughs> we get it. We okay. get it. We've heard you. You've said the same thing to us about four, about four times. I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Victor and Eric, but I went all the way 
through that road from the other side the other day just to look at it. And if we can make that section of road comparable to what the rest of that road is, and there's some brush that needs to be cut on the rest of the road too, but for the most part, the rest of the road is passable. So, you know, we're not, we're not widening the road. We're not, we're just making it possible to get in there and do the work we need to do. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah, the only other um, thing around this, and it may not be the right time to ask or remind you about this, but there was some conversation about the idea of putting a sign, a small sign up, probably at the, somewhere around Rumney, probably at the beginning of Story Road, that just says, you know, Hunger Mountain Trail this way, very small kind of sign. So people don't wind up because Google tells them to now go up East Bear Swamp. We discussed that and we agreed with that. And that would be okay. a great project for you guys to do to come up with what that sign should be. All right, you want us to take that on? That's fine, we can do sure. that. Sure. Okay. Just make sure we, we, I mean, we would probably pay for the sign, but if you, you come up with a language, that would be helpful, yes. Yeah, and we'll show you a design or whatever. Yeah, okay. okay good. Thank you. Anything else, gentlemen? Silence. I'm good. <laughs> no, I don't. I, yeah, I don't have anything. I mean, with the exception of the truck situation, it sounds like things are things are going okay. But we do need a we do need and, another man. Yeah, I will. I will reach out to them again tomorrow to find out where they're at. Thank you, Eric. Let's make sure they're still on course. Okay. Yep. All right. Anything else, anybody, for Eric or Vic on the roads? Okay, thank you. Um, so moving on to other business, approving the minutes of the July 19th select board meeting action likely. Um, I think we have enough people to approve those minutes. I believe we do. Was there a motion on those minutes? Um, and a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Victor. So all in favor of approving the July 19th select board minutes, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? We've approved our minutes. Uh, we've already done the, uh, the uh, ADA inspection issue. Uh, uh, you had something, Phil, update on. Yeah, Vermont, <laughs> pardon me. <clears throat> uh, discussion with uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, I've, I've been back and forth a little bit with the director of the Municipal Assistance Center about training, and um, she is getting some resources together for me um, and some people to consider who could uh, do some work with us around um, roles, responsibilities of the select board, uh, open meeting law, uh, you know, some of those other you know, issues around various legal um, issues that, that we get confronted with. Um, the other piece that she suggested was, um, I think a person out of UVM who, and I can't remember the name, who does some work and they had her do a, a, a training a while back on how to run an effective meeting and basically setting policies and procedures for board meetings. Um, and she sent me some materials. I haven't had a chance to look at them. I just got those this afternoon. But anyway, uh, we are moving forward. And um, I'm going to look at some stuff, have some other discussions with her, and come back to you with whatever I find. And we can, uh, we can think about when we want to schedule uh, yep. something to move forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. And uh, Liz, you wanted to talk about the the grant is that a dead duck at this point in time or well i mean i guess i guess we're going to have to decide i mean it, as sarah said we can't just decide to use $30,000 and find at least hire someone to do a structural and MEP study of the town hall which we might just want to make a phone call tomorrow to see if we can get someone on board to do that and get a quote. Is there a requirement for a, a dollar limit that we have to get um, bids out for that? Does anyone know? 
That's a good question. Yes, we have a we have a policy on that. And of course, I don't have it here. In I think it's like twenty five thousand. This would be something we would get. Would get okay, so then we would if if we want to do that without you know discussing it as a use of the ARPA funds, we should just go ahead and do that. And then maybe if we're able to get something, we're not going to be able to get anything before the grant opens up in September, probably. So we, at that point, we can see. The, I, I, the deadline is not like immediate for the grant. So it's possible that someone would be able to do it in the next couple of months. I have no idea how busy these people are. They could be six I would, months. I would, tell you, I would tell you they're busy, but you're right. Yeah. Who knows? So at any rate, why don't we just leave it as an option? And then, you know, what I don't want to do is say, oh, I'm going to apply for it and then not and lose that opportunity if Sandy had some things she wanted to apply for, which at this point, you know, she said, I think it's a good idea to use that grant for this particular purpose. But if we really don't have that time, um, then we should... I mean, do we as a select board need to vote that we're going to at least use some money to um, to do this study? That's you got yeah, to I, I think we do, but I think I think the first step is to uh, make is phone to calls. try and find two or three people who would do it, and they can give us. Right. I mean, they can look they can look at that building and tell us how much money it's going to take to do it. Right. And I don't want to tell them we think it's going to cost sixty thousand dollars. No, 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 no. We want to know. That's not how much know. it costs. We don't want the world's best job, but we want a good job, and we need right. help. Right. Well, so the other question is, when you and Vic, you know about this probably from your work in the state. When you're doing bids, don't you have to tell them all the parameters of what they're going to bid on? I don't know what those parameters are. That that's correct. I mean, you would have to. You know, say something to the effect you would like a kind of an analysis on the uh, and a feasibility study on uh, uh, on uh, continuing to use the uh, the uh, town hall for the purposes that you want to use it for. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't I don't think any mat no matter what you do, I don't think you're going to have 200, 300 people there, and I don't think I don't think you're going to have parking for uh, too many. But anyways. I would just like to, yeah, that's what we should do is decide what we're looking for, and finally finalize what we're looking for, and uh, then uh, you know put out a proposal to uh, uh, a group of or hopefully get two or three people to come back and uh, say that they're interested, and then vote on an amount that we're willing to pay. Yep. So, but my question too is is that and maybe we accept this, is that if we were to sell, if we decided to sell this building, we have to disclose what we learned in the structural study. Yeah. Yeah. And so we just have to take that gamble that they're not gonna say this building is worthless. Okay. Right. Didn't you, didn't right. you guys decide that you were gonna bring this up at the next meeting? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. That was okay. trying to keep us on task on that. Yeah. So, I well, I guess, yeah, this just I goes back to the grant. I, would say, I guess what I would say, Liz, is let's keep the door open to do the grant. My understanding, and unfortunately, I can't remember the woman's name who called me on that fateful day to tell me we didn't get the grant. But she said there probably isn't a lot of work to be done to resubmit that grant. You guys have done most of the work. Would you do some polishing? Would you make a few changes? But she didn't seem to think it would be that big a deal to resubmit it. So, yeah. You know. But I guess my question is be between now and next meeting, would it make sense if I reached out to, because maybe Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission could write up for us a, you know, a bid description so that we at least have that. Sure. There's no, there's no harm in us doing that, is there? There's no, we don't no. have to vote on that. No. no. It's just a request for I, proposals. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so I can do that. I can reach yeah. out to them and say, listen, this is getting desperate. Can you help us create a request for, for, a, um, for a bid um, for, and, and what that would look like, like what, what we would need to include um, that they would want to bid on? Right. They can probably do that for us. I think yeah. so. just 
it's not really a bid. These are professional consulting services. So it's basically a request for proposals from right. engineering firms around some parameters, like you suggested, you know, with, I mean, we know some of the things that need to be looked at, but it's really um, uh, the viability uh, as we move forward of that, of that building. So yeah, really. it doesn't have to be as specific as a bid document would be. It's really just establishing some parameters that engineering firms can then look at that and give us a proposal. Got a request for information, Phil? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That could be I have one yeah. question, and I don't want to hold this up or anybody up. I'm just in the back of my head. I'm trying to figure out. Like, people say we're going to tear it down. We're not going to do this. Isn't that a historic building? No. No. Isn't a historic building? Go ahead, no, it burned, it burned to the ground in like 1933. There's nothing historic about it. It has no historic designation whatsoever. I'm sad to report. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just wondering. I mean, that, I, that may be better. <laughs> that may be better. Yeah. Peter, I just want to say one last thing. If uh, yeah. I, do, I don't know if you guys saw my front porch forum post today, but all our land records going back to 2001 are online from today, 2002, November of 2001, and almost all our survey maps going back to 1972 are also online. Wow. And wow. Great. Phase one and phase two will be uh, using some of our restoration funds to actually get all of our records online. And that's a, that is a juggling, uh, that's a juggling step, getting our microfiche out of the state archives and, and giving it to this company to index, but it should be possible. So um, that's great. And great. we used, we used restoration money. I don't think, and we didn't use any, um, I don't think we used any ARPA funds for it, not directly. Probably not. Yeah. Yes. So cool. yeah. Nice job, Sarah. Yeah. Well, it took a long time. We we were just about to do it when the pandemic hit. We were given we were became the low men on the totem pole because there were some towns that didn't have anything digitized. But if you want to download something, it's going to be three dollars a page. A dollar fifty goes to the town. A dollar fifty goes to uh, the the company that does this. Nice. So that means we will have less people in our office pawing through our land records, right? Uh, yeah, the idea is to have, you know, I mean, a lot of the, a lot, there's so many places that want this and, right. um, you know, some towns have held off for fear and I don't know if this is true. I don't think so that that would allow uh, a viral access into our land records and destroy them all. But even if that happens, we've got it all on paper. Well, there's <laughs> going to be a robust backup system, I'm sure. Let's yeah. not talk about it all on paper. <laughs> yeah, that's not on our server, right? That's on no, it's it's other companies. Right. Yeah. It's on another company's server. And, yeah. So and, liabilities on them. Yep. All liability. And it's a it's a it's a server that a lot of uh, towns in Vermont use. So we're yep. just it's, it's a big day so for Middlesex. In this process, we didn't discover our missing land records, right? Those are not land records, those are town records. Oh, I'm sorry, town records, yes. Right. 1948 to 1968, now yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, have a good evening. I'm adjourning the meeting. Woo-hoo, bye everybody. Here you go.